My name is Thorsten Norgaard. I'm a photographer. I travel the world taking photographs and teaching workshops. Today I will talk about the Leica M11 prototype with built-in EVF. Below the video here there is free downloads. There is an ebook about some of the famous photographers and the iconic photos, how they made them and also why I take photos and how I take photos. And also today special there is uh, presets and styles for Lightroom and Capture One for making the Leica look. Either you have a Leica camera and you want to make special uh, black and white looking photos or nice color photos with my styles and presets or you don't have a Leica but you dream of having a Leica and then you can actually also use those presets and styles to get the famous Leica look. So click below the video and use the promo codes there and it's all free. Here I have the Leica M11 and this is the prototype of the Leica with built-in EVF. And don't be alarmed. Uh, the good thing with prototypes is that it's something you make to test and then either you put them into production or you don't. So this prototype is one that like I have actually <laughs> distributed a lot of them. Uh, so anybody who have an M11 have a prototype of uh, the M11 with built-in EVF, which means if you have the EVF here, then you can see how does it work. The Leica M11 is basically like any Leica for the last 100 years. And what does that mean? Well, that means that it's a manual focusing camera um, and the lenses you have on here is the best lenses you can buy for money in the world. Uh, that's the simplicity of it. And then you have an extremely simple camera. Uh, it's really well built and it's compact, it's portable. Uh, and it's so well built that you drop it on the floor or you get hit by a bicycle, you just uh, keep photographing. So it's very unique and but the simplicity of this, I mean great optics, perfect format, but also the simplicity of this camera, how it feels to use this camera. And you can say one of the unique things about the Leica that you can't really measure or you can't do long reviews about is that this is a camera that focuses on the ability of you as the photographer. You're the one that see the photo and you're the one who's going to compose it and take the photo and decide when you're going to take the photograph. And this, the, you could say, the ability or the function of the camera is not, is just to be not there. That's the idea. That's the ideal of a camera and that is exactly what a Leica has. You have many other cameras where all your attention goes into the camera and how does this work and what, what is this? Uh, and kind of like the cameras like look at me, look at me, look at me and do this. It's kind of like iPhones these days, it, it keeps telling you things all the time. This camera does nothing and that's the really unique thing about it. And it's something you have to pick up a like and you have to use it to realize how simple it can be and how much it puts you in the driving seat that you take the photographs. So that is what it does and you could say the simplicity is that you have uh, three buttons. You have here the shutter speed and that is how long time the shutter curtain is up so light can hit the sensor. Then you have over here the ISO that directs how sensitive is the sensor to light. Uh, so if it's very low light you turn up the sensitivity to 3200, 6400 or whatever and then you can photograph in the dark. If it's sunshine you go down to 64. Brilliant. And then you have out here in the lens you have the focus ring here but then you also have the aperture ring here and that is the one that regulates the whole inside lens how much light comes through. So those are the three controls that all deal with light and that what you need to get the correct exposure and that is basically what a camera is. And then it doesn't have anything else really. And then you might wonder but no but my Canon or Nikon or whatever Fuji has, uh, has this also doesn't the Leica have this? No the Leica doesn't have that and that is the point. And then you say but why doesn't it have it? Well the question is more why does your camera have more than just those three controls? That's really the question. So this simplicity and then you have one thing that was very unique uh, about 100 years ago when it came out and that is the range finder. And the Leica M, the M stands for Messerger, that's German for distance finder or distance measurement. 
Uh, and now it's just called M because it would be impossible to call it uh, like a Miss M system. Yeah, you'll see it doesn't work. So, but what is unique about that is that you have a range finder here. So when I look through a Leica here, I actually see uh, the frame this way. I don't see through the lens. Um, and, and you say, yeah, you're, then you have, at one point, the 60s, 70s, we started to have SLR cameras, that's single lens reflex cameras. And that is cameras where you see through a viewfinder and a mirror and prism, and you see it out through a lens. And then when you take the photo, the mirror goes up, the shutter goes up, it takes the picture, and it all closes again, so now you can see through the lens again. And single lens reflex, of course, implies that there must have been cameras with more than one lens, and you're right about that because there was, uh, before single lens, there was cameras where you had two lenses on, one you could see through, and one where you could take the photo through. The Leica is so simple, it always only had one lens, and then you had the range finder. And the way it works with uh, the distance measurement is that you have this little eye over here, so you look for this one, and there's a little spot in the middle of this one that is reflected via prism over here, and that is the one that when you focus, you see it overlaps and that's how you measure the distance. So that was a big deal, of course, because before that you would have to look at your lens and say, mm, I think it's three meters over there, let's put it on three meters, and you took the photo. And then you would learn that, no, it was five meters or one and a half meter. Uh, so suddenly you have this precision that you could actually focus. So that also means you could say, this is 100 years of tradition. And when you talk about like a people, anything that is old is the best until something new come about and we and we realize okay this is actually not a bad idea this is this is okay we'll we'll take that also and we implement it in our old camera so that is part of the heritage of having a Leica is that night this is how it used to be this is how it's always been and let's stay with that so it's very conservative and that also means that Leica first came out with electronic viewfinder in 2013. So one thing is understand, we're talking about a mirrorless camera, it's been mirrorless for 100 years, it never had a mirror. So all this uh, hype about mirrorless cameras is like, yeah, Leica was always mirrorless. Um, but what happened in 2013 is the Leica M240 came out and that one went from CCD sensor to CMOS sensor. And you can say, well, CCD sensor most likely was the best sensors, but it doesn't really matter because CMOS sensors have different advances. One thing is they're less expensive to make or they're cheaper to make and they produce less heat and they need less battery. And that is a thing you really want in a camera. You have all cameras are small bodies, just like iPhones. Your iPhone gets really hot when it works. The same with a camera. You don't want heat in camera. It also heats affects uh, the image quality because the hotter the, the sensor get, the more noise you get. So that's why you went with CMOS. And CMOS then have the advantage that now, which you couldn't do with CCD, but CMOS sensor you can actually keep it open uh, so you have a live view. And that means then you can actually do video. So Leica implemented in the Leica M24, they implemented video, so you had a little button here, you press it and then you record video. And when you can record video, it also means you can not record video, but you can still see as if it's a video. And you say that's what happens when you put on the EVF on a Leica and you turn on the live view, now you can see everything live and you can see your focus live and your frame live and you take the photo and so on. Um, so that's basically what live view is that you see via a little screen in here, you see what the sensor see in real time. And uh, that gives new possibilities, but of course this is a like as you cannot it has to have a range finder, it has to have everything, so that's why the solution was, now we're going to put it on top here, uh, and it's not going to look that pretty, but it's good. And you could say something people would ask for, can we have uh, live view, can we have this mirrorless uh, live view, and also people would say, well, it's really hard for my eyes, I'm getting old, or whatever, I cannot see to focus. Which actually, in my opinion, is not an issue. Uh, the range finder mechanism here is so simple. So you just have to be able, even if, if your vision is blurred, you can actually see now it's overlapping, it's in focus, and you can take the photo. You don't actually have to see in detail. So that way you could say it's very raw. It, you don't have to have a refined view or anything to use this. But nevertheless, it's something people ask for. And in the Leica M240 in 2013, they got it. 
Then we jump forward and we get the Leica M10 and it's a different EVF, electronic viewfinder you put on top, but still the same principle. And Leica skipped the video because, as I just told you, Leica people like like it was in old days. And so that means video is, it wasn't there in the old days, so we don't, <laughs> we, we don't run video. And also there was other things added in Leica M24, so I said no, let's just skip it, let's keep it very simple. Then we get to the Leica M11 and here we have a new uh, improved uh, EVF. It's made of metal, it's square and it sits up here and you can take it off and so on. Um, and now we get into the really exciting thing that this is the M11 with built-in EVF. So if you have been looking at the Leica M11 or you have tried it or you have bought it and you wondered why do they do this? So what do they do? Well, one thing is if we take off the lens here, you will see uh, in here, in the camera, we have a shutter curtain. It's black, so you can hardly see it, but you'll see in a moment when I open it. Normally there would be uh, three light sensors down here that will measure the light real time. So that means a traditional Leica, you point it or something and it calculates the shutter speed uh, and it measures the light. And when you take the picture, the shutter goes up and it goes down again, so light hits the sensor. Um, but like I said, no, with this one we can remove that, we're not going to have uh, those three small eyes, those light sensors. And of course that's something that it makes it less complicated to make the camera, it makes it simpler, and it also makes it more economical that you don't have to go out and produce or source uh, light meter sensors, which not a lot of cameras use any, any, anymore, so it's kind of like a rarity, it's going to be expensive, more and more expensive. It's not here, but like I said, instead it's like, no, we're going to measure the light on uh, the sensor. And that in return means that once you turn on the camera, you will see here, then the shutter curtain goes up, so now what you're looking at is the sensor. Uh, and that gives a click in the beginning, which is kind of confusing. And why would I do that? Why can't I just do it like they used to do in the old days? And then the way it works is that when you take a photo, then the shutter curtain, it basically, you, if you really listen, you, can, you have like three clicks. You don't really, it sounds almost like compiled to one click. But basically what happens is that the shutter curtain it is open, it closes down, and now it's taking the picture, so it goes up and closes again, and then it opens again, because now it's going to read the light again. And if you take a series of pictures, you will see it's like this. And then the shutter curtain basically stays open here, generally. It actually doesn't always stay open, uh, and I think that might have been a glitch in the beginning. I think it's supposed to stay open, but of course now the camera is set to power off after two minutes. So if I haven't used or touched the shutter release on the camera for two minutes, the shutter curtain will close down and the camera will basically turn off. And then next time I press the shutter release, because it's still on here but it's on power safe, then there will be a little brief few seconds or whatever the shutter curtain goes up and now we're ready to take pictures again. I could also, with the new, uh, very improved, bigger batteries in the M11, I could just leave it on all the time. It wouldn't. You could say, um, the light meter is not a live view, it's a light meter, so it's much less power to use the shutter open uh, with light metering than it is to use it wide open with live view. So that's a new detail to get used to. But you say, this, from a Leica standpoint, when you have had uh, the previous Leica M10P, M10R, M10, the monochrome versions M240, M9 and so on, why change something that works the world? I mean, get this new sound of the shutter opening. And of course, this is because this camera is designed to be with electronic viewfinder. And let's just jump straight in, so here we have the electronic viewfinder. And it's not a pretty sight to have it up here. Uh, I mean, it works. You look for it, and it has one great thing: is you can actually tilt it like this. You can take pictures like this, and that's actually something you once you start doing it, uh, you find out this is actually really smart. And often you you have people just in front of you, a few meters or feet away, and you point the camera at them. You look down here, and it is like as if you don't point the camera at them. Whereas if you do like this, then 
they feel the cameras. It's a very interesting thing, but it's, and you can shoot around corners with it like this, and you can, I also sometimes do like this, that I shoot, so I get a higher point and I, I photograph this way. Um, but you could say summer's mount is not pretty with an EVF up here. It's kind of like an addition to a great system. So you look at this one and let's just see, uh, this is where the rangefinder sits and this is the focus mechanism. So in here, if we took this apart, you will see all kinds of prisms going here, very sophisticated system and and when you focus the lens then it touches this one that moves this one. So it's like a lot of mechanics uh, that if you didn't have that uh, it would probably save some money. Then we take this one and we put it inside. And how do we do this? Well, you can say if we take off uh, this rubber thing here and then we look at the, the inside of the EVF. Let me just take this off. Then you will see that in here, we have a frame here, it's like two and a half millimeters thick, and that's the one that enables, basically holds the EVF onto the camera to this one. Um, <clears throat> and then we have some other frame around here, and we have some optics here. So, it's pretty easy to imagine that this thing actually fits uh, right in here. Um, <clears throat> and that is how close we are to having an M11 with a tonic viewfinder. If, if your heartbeat goes up now because you're a hardcore uh, Leica user, no, Leica is not going to stop making rangefinder cameras. Uh, there's going to be a rangefinder and it's going to be a different version with built-in EVF. We think, maybe, or we hope, or some, a few people hope not. Um, the thing is that, of course, it's going to change the design, you could say we have these two eyes is very classic for Leica. So if you imagine they're not there, then what are we going to put instead? Like it's going to look ugly or what can we do? There has to be something. Uh, so that's something that, of course, they're like trying to figure that out at Leica, most likely as part of trying to work with this. So this thing having a built-in EVF in a Leica is something that has been ongoing for quite a while. And Here's some things I can tell you that you can keep speculating for yourself if you were ever going to have a Leica M11 with Billy EVF. I'm pretty sure you will because that why else would you remove uh, the light meter and make it like this. Once you have a uh, Billy EVF, it makes sense. And you can say you have here uh, the Leica SL is all uh, with Billy EVF. It's a really beautiful EVF. You can say it's very big optics here because the EVF Basically, the EVF of a camera is not so much how many megapixels resolution it has. It is, of course, it has to have fairly correct colors and it has to have some resolution. Uh, but the main thing is actually the optics here, and that's kind of like why it's sticking out here. This is excellent optics, and this comes from the Leica S system that was like a, or is a SLR uh, medium format camera with a fantastic. Uh, Viewfinder. So kind of this is the optical part of that that has been attached here and then there's a screen in here. There's also the Leica Q and Leica Q2 and Leica Q2 monochrome with built-in EVF and no range finder or acoustic finder of any kind. So that is something that exists and is something that works and it works uh, fairly fast. You have on this one, uh, when you use, once you put on uh, the EVF here, you have to live with, it takes startup time and then you go from focus and you zoom in to focus better and then you have to go back to full frame so there's a little bit of delay then you take the pictures a blackout and then you come back again so there's a lot of delays compared to if you just have a rangefinder here that's one of the unique thing about the rangefinder here is the simplicity of it that all the time you look for it you see everything and even when you take a picture there's no blackout there's nothing and that is a fairly important thing when you take photos if you take a scene in the street or you take photograph of kids or you take portraits is that you want to see what is happening because you have to be able to take the photo at the right moment and a lot of people don't have the idea they just think like oh nice sunshine we take a picture but you have to have the timing and it's extremely important and if you cannot see what's happening you cannot have that timing so that is why 
Uh, the rangefinder here is extremely fast and intuitive to work with. And then there's also another thing is like, when you look for this one, it's kind of like looking for a hole. There's no, there's optics, but there's nothing that shows you the depth of field or anything else that shows the exposure. Uh, it is like looking with your eyes. And the really interesting, interesting thing with that is that, that when you see, when you look for this one, you don't see the final picture. So you have to imagine it, which is great in the sense that once you build the certainty that that can be done and you know what you're doing, then this is the way to do it. Because you can say when you walk down the street or you go somewhere, you see that's a picture. So kind of like you already saw the final picture, even you might not see it very clear, or maybe you see it very clear, we're all different. But you see the picture and that's what you make, make you want to take the photograph. And then you take up the camera and you take the photo and you still haven't seen the final picture. And of course you can look at the screen, but normally you come home, you put it on the computer and some of the stuff you did is like, no, that wasn't that great, but some of it is like, oh, this is amazing. And very often that freedom that you actually make the photograph and you kind of predict it and then you use the camera to take it without actually being sure how it's going to look, but you have a vision about it. That is a very optimum way to make it because you are making the photos and it should be your vision of how things should look and not how uh, a camera thinks it should look. So that's another uh, advantage with this also. So the way it works at Leica is that you have product managers and designers and everybody else. And of course they're working on cameras and lenses consistently, uh, different models, SL2 and here the M11, uh, but also M12, M13, what's going to happen in the future. And of course they look at technologies around. So that's one reason that uh, I was at Leica, uh, there was a big uh, meeting with the Leica Historical Society. So maybe there are like 100 people in the room, we're in a conference room, and there is questions and answers to the lens designer, product manager, and uh, the people that like it, the CEO and the owner and so on. And so people have all sorts of questions uh, that, that they would answer. But then also uh, the product manager, Stephen Daniel, had a question to uh, the people in the crowd. And that was uh, if Leica made an uh, Leica M with building EVF, how many would think that's a good idea? Basically, how many would buy it? And only a few people, I think we were four people out of 100 who put up our hands and I'll buy one. And, and then we laughed a little bit and said, well, I'll buy two then, if that's the case. But the point was, that was not really, I mean, yeah, it was a cool group, but it's historical society. So that means most of the people in the room, they like to collect old cameras. So they couldn't really care less if like it makes uh, a billion EVF or not till in like 25 years, then you can buy it for your collection as a historic camera. Uh, but recently there have been made uh, surveys online that shows that 50% of people like a, a users would love to have a M11 or like a M with billion EVF. And maybe five to seven percent, I think it is, think that 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 should be that should be made a law that makes it impossible. So here comes the kicker. Uh, so I went to Leica a few months ago, and I and I talked to Stephen Daniel, and I and I say like I'm 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 going to make a review of the M11 with Billy Neves because it sits right here, and of course uh, they don't tell anything what they're doing or what they're up to. Um, they will give hints and so on, but basically the interesting thing he said is like, yeah, but uh, electronic viewfinder is only good for autofocus. So if we have to make an M camera with a build in EVF, we have to add something extra. And you say, what could that extra be? Well, it could be autofocus, but it's kind of unlikely that you would have autofocus in, in this system. You could say, so doesn't really matter, you can make up your own mind, I'm sure that it's going to come, uh, no matter what, because you could say here you have one of the things that was a selling point on the Leica SL when it came out in 2015, this is the SL2, same stuff, uh, more megapixels and stuff, but one of the things is like it's only having an electronic viewfinder, 
but then you can put all M lenses. The SL system came with a whole new set of lenses, uh, out of focus lenses, some of them long and very big and zoom and what have you, uh, but you can also put on the M lenses. So here I have the Noctlux, this is the 50.95, so this one have a razor thin uh, uh, focus, so that means when you take a picture of a face, then the eyes are in focus, but actually the nose tip is a little bit blurred. You actually don't notice that, but you see the ears is blurred and the background is totally gone. So that means when you focus this one on the eyes, it has to be very precise. And people would complain like, no, my eyes are getting old, I can't really see, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but yeah, hooray, here with SL, now I can finally see. And you can also, you can press this button here, uh, and then you zoom in uh, so you can focus. And you can get it really precise. Of course you have the delay that you zoom in on the eyes, you focus, and then as soon as you press the release button, now you get the full frame, and you can frame, and you take the photo. But of course there's a delay, or whatever you want to call it, the time from when you zoom in and focus on the eyes, till you get back to the full frame, and you take the photo. And by that time, you could have moved one inch this way, or the person you're photographing moved one inch the other way, and it's out of focus. And that's one thing that would mystify people. Why I, I, it was sharp and now it's not, it's, did my sensor move or something like that? No, it's just things move. Uh, but some of the is that putting on M lenses with manual focus on a camera like this with only electronic viewfinder is uh, perfect. And you say it would also be perfect here because you wouldn't have this ugly building block up here, you would have it in here, and hopefully that would be a little bit more speedy connection, meaning less blackouts and shorter uh, delays, having this inside the camera than outside the camera. So you would say in that sense, why would Leica not just make this one like it is, black and silver, and of course that's going to come 11P also with a few changes, but then also make a uh, M11 with built-in EVF. Uh, that is something that people ask for, and I personally think it's uh, a great idea. I can't really predict how would it feel. I mean, I know that I like the camera just like this. You could say naked without anything. I generally don't like to put on hand grips and all kinds of other stuff. I like it as original and simple as possible. And you say it would be like that. And if you have tried uh, a like a Q or like a Q2, you know that the electronic viewfinder works really well because it's all it got and it's fast and it sits right here, it's very easy to use uh, and it makes sense. Uh, and also you could say, speaking of EVF and manual focus or autofocus that is only for autofocus, no it's not. Uh, about 50%, at least the people I spoke to in my workshops, 50% of the people that have a queue, they use manual focus. Uh, like I say, that it's only 30% because they can see when you use the, the the uh, like a photos app on your phone to transfer pictures uh, then they can see how many people use what f-stop and do you use autofocus what iso and blah 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 so they have a lot of statistics of what do people actually take not what they take photos of but how is the camera settings when they take the photo but still uh, for a great fast autofocus camera like the q2 if it's 30 percent that still uses manually that's quite a big percentage that prefer to be in control of that. And I think that's right, I mean you could say, I don't think that a, a Leica M with autofocus is anywhere near in the horizon, if it's ever going to arrive. And it's not something that I miss. You could say, I don't think that autofocus is a great idea. I don't think it made people happy. It's kind of like auto means self, so it basically means the camera is going to focus by itself. And that is what it does. You point the autofocus camera, uh, as something and then either the thing you've, you want it to be in focus going to be focused on the background or something in the foreground. And of course that mystifies people and most people who have an isofocus camera don't know that you could actually focus it manually or that we used to do it like that. Uh, so they think that's just how it is with cameras that sometimes they focus, sometimes they don't focus. Uh, but that is the problem with autofocus that you have to tell the autofocus where to be. So in that sense it's much easier to just manual focus and you can say once I focus over here, you can see this, I have a lamp and a typewriter over here, I focus on this one, I can take a picture. And then 
I could wait for somebody walking in the door and I could take another picture. And the focus doesn't change because I set it and I decided the focus. And so that is a great uh, feature that you maintain manual focus and you have uh, an electronic viewfinder. A Leica M11 with uh, built-in UF is going to give some advantages. We already have with uh, the Leica M here because we got this new uh, battery system. This battery seems almost to last forever, so it's almost a joke to buy a spare battery. I did and I hardly ever use it. Um, it is nice to have, but you actually don't really need it. Uh, so that's even with electronic viewfinder. So battery is not an issue anymore. So what it does is that the electronic viewfinder built into the camera makes it very simple. And it's going to enable you to see exactly the focus, the depth of field, the exposure, the frame, the colors, everything you can preview and you can also set the camera to take the photo and then you get a, a, a picture up of what you just did so you can actually quality control the picture and see okay this is correct or if it's a little bit too dark you can change the setting take it again. Uh, so that makes it very fast and intuitive and effective <laughs> to use the Leica M with the built-in EVF and also the great thing about EVF is that you can see in the dark. So you can say when you have an EVF, uh, you can take pictures at night or in the evening and generally the EVF lights it up like it's daylight. So you take a picture in a night, in a nightclub or a dark restaurant uh, or a dark street, it's lit up like it's daylight. So it makes it very easy to work with the scene and focus and everything. And then you can set it so once you press in the release button half, then you see the actual exposure and then you can deal with the exposure because a dark street should look dark, it shouldn't look like daylight. Uh, but that's a thing you can do and that is one thing. I actually think the rangefinder is okay uh, for dark scenes. What, the way you have to use a rangefinder is that you have to find a high contrast edge. Of course you can't focus black and black just like you can't focus white and white. So even in sunshine you're going to have a problem focusing if you don't find a high contrast edge. So that's what you look for. And it's actually easy to see then if you compare to uh, SLR cameras with the mirror or where you see for the lens. Those when it gets dark or even like indoor in the afternoon or something with any scene with less light and two scenes with dark light, it's actually really hard. Uh, to see what you're looking at. The rangefinder is much more superior so that you see with much more clarity and it's much more simple focus or uh, the focusing is very simple. The focus is very advanced and precise. Uh, so but anyways that is advantage you get with this one and this kind of like uh, you see a live Polaroid of your photo all the time and sometimes that's great. I mean I talked about before it's nice to just see it and you can see the final result. Uh, that's great because you create the photo with your imagination. Then there's other times where you put on a lens like a Noctux where everything looks so different. And you go out take photos and it, you don't really think of how different it is till you see the pictures like wow this is really awesome. The thing is you put on the EVF or you have it inside the camera and you put on Noctux, now the world actually looks like you see it for the Noctux and that's a galaxy Kick, give you a kick, it's going to inspire you that wow, this is really, and you know, you can work with it. So, lots of advances with having in uh, the built EVF. And then, of course, the big question is do I then need one of each, or do I need two of those, or one of like what's going to happen? Uh, but it is something that I think is coming, uh, and it's just a matter of when. That's all I had to talk about today. Uh, <laughs> very interesting uh, discussion and it's been going on for forums for years and amongst Leica people for years. Soon we will see if we get uh, a camera VDF and I think we do. As always there is uh, links to free stuff below the video so grab some of it before the video ends. And till I see you the next time, thank you for watching and remember to always wear a camera.